Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible and turn it on. Uh, turn to the first book of Genesis, chapter 1. Uh, we're going to take a look at a few things here. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to call this, but we'll take a look. All right. In Genesis chapter 1, we are going to go to ch uh, chapter 1 and verse 26. And God said, now before I even start on doing this, I want everybody to know the modern Bible versions change doctrines terribly. I mean, they, it's just, you do a year's study on Bible versions like I did, and you'll see the modern Bible versions are garbage. They're owned by companies that print gay porn, satanic literature, uh, Bibles by the Church of Satan, uh, the NASB, which is the uh, approved Catholic Vatican Pope approved uh, Bible version for Protestants, so called, uh, was part of uh, the Lockman Foundation. Uh, Lockman was a, a member of the Masonic Lodge. And uh, I don't know if you've, the, those of you who've heard of James White, he does nothing but bash the King James Bible. And uh, when I looked on the Dewey Lockman Foundation website, uh, James White was listed as a consultant for the NASB, which means he got paid. So, you know, you want to trust uh, popes and Masonic Lodge members for your Bible? You know, was King James perfect? No. But I'll guarantee you, you should read some of King James's theolog theological works. A man was a believer, people. He wrote a book on, uh, a, an article on demonology. Pretty good stuff. I mean, the guy was not, uh, he, he, he knew far more about the Bible and the Word of God. And he was a believer uh, then, you know, probably 95% of the people today, maybe more, I don't know. It's terrible. So, all right, Genesis 1, verse 26. Stick with the King James, stick with the Webster's, stick with the Geneva Bibles. You'll be in good shape. And God said, let us, let us, plural, and God said, let us make man in our image, plural. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So what is this? Is this plural gods? Let us make man in our image? Huh, How's that? how does that work out? Is there a plurality of gods? Uh, well, let's see. In Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4, it says here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. One Lord. Zechariah 14, 9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Huh. Isn't Jesus called a king? Yeah. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one Let's go to the New Testament, Mark 12, verse 29. And Jesus answered him, The first of all, well, uh, here it is, uh, a doctor of the law, a lawyer, 
asked Jesus what was the great commandment in the law. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 6. But to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all by whom are all things, and we by him. Ephesians 4 and verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. So if there's one Lord, but in Genesis it said, let us, let us, and God said, you know, let us make man in our image. How, how does that work? I mean, here it is, it says there's one Lord, but then God says, you know, let us make man in our image. How do we rectify that? Well, it's not that hard. Really, it's not. Now, I don't like using the word Trinity because it's not in the Bible. And the Jehovah's Witnesses, when they talk about the Trinity, uh, they'll say, well, you know, uh, Catholics make it out to be three gods. Well, maybe they do, maybe they don't. Now, the thing about me is if I study the Mormons, I'm not going to read what the Baptists tell me about the Mormons. I'm going to go to the Mormons and read their books. And I did the same thing with the Jehovah's Witnesses. When I went to study the Jehovah's Witnesses, because uh, in Bi Bible college, I had an entire class on uh, just the Jehovah's Witnesses. I got their Bible, their books. I read their doctrines from their materials. I knew exactly what they taught. Okay, so, but you can say Trinity is not in the Bible. However, the word Godhead is... Now, in Genesis, we read that God made man in his image. And the Bible plainly declares that man has, one, a body. Do you have a body? Sure you do. I do, too. But that's not your... Uh, and then you have uh, a soul, which is not your body. The Bible declares man has a soul. The Bible declares that man has a spirit, which is not your body, which is not your soul. So, man made in God's image has a body, a soul, and a spirit. Does that make three men? No. Or three women? No. Every living man, Adam kind, mankind on this earth, if they're alive, walking on this earth, they have a body, a soul, and a spirit. Don't believe me? No problem. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. Listen carefully. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And not H-O-L-Y, but W-H-O-L-L-Y. You know, completely. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole Spirit, one, and soul, two, and body, three, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Three parts, one man, let us make man in our image. Do you get that? Man has three parts, a body, a soul, and a spirit. God made man in his image. Okay, I hope you get it. Acts 17 and verse 29. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, praise the Lord for that, we ought not to think that the Godhead, 
that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and men's device. Hmm. Okay. The Godhead, not the Trinity. Godhead, Bible word. I like that. Romans chapter 1 and verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. When, a, when a, somebody claims to be an atheist, tells you that they're an atheist, oh, I don't believe in God. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, unless, of course, they were born without eyes, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Oh. Colossians 2 and verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Verse 9. For in him, now speaking of Christ, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. See, Christ had two natures. He was God, and he was man. He was both. And we're going to get we're going to we're going to dig into that a lot more. In verse 10. For in him Christ uh, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. Now, let's go to Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. And if you want to see if you've got a fake Bible Go to Isaiah 7 and verse 14 and see if the word virgin is in there. If it's not in there, you got a fake Bible, buddy boy. Let me tell you, that's, that's, that's how I check it. I mean, you know, the, 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 these modern Bibles will say, oh, a young woman will conceive. Well, guess what? Down in South America, there was a girl that got pregnant at 10 and a couple days after she turned 11, she gave birth. Is that a miracle? No, I don't think so, because her uh, stepdad was um, impregnated her. I, I, you know, I don't, yeah, it was, trust me, it wasn't a virgin birth. It wasn't a miracle, okay? So, what are they going to tell you? That Joseph and Mary, you know, Mary, oh, well, Mary must have been like eight or nine years old. Uh, sorry, they were Hebrews, not Muslims, okay? Um, Isaiah 7 and verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And you know what? Emmanuel, that name is in the Old Testament and it's in the New Testament. I like that name. I like that name because if you're talking to somebody New Testament or Old Testament, it's, you know, well, let's go to Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. Matthew 1, 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God with us. Now, this is the most uncontroversial verse in the Bible. This is another way of checking your Bible. Do you have a fake Bible? You do if it doesn't match what I'm reading. 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy. See, this is not even controversial. 
and without controversy. Great, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. You see, Jesus had a dual nature. God became man. Let's read 1 Thessalonians 5.23 again. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit, spirit and soul, soul and body, body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, God made man in his image. And the Bible says man has a body and a soul and a spirit. Three parts equals one man. Three parts. Isaiah 10, 18. And shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body, both soul and body, and they shall be as when a standard bearer fainteth. Micah 6 and verse 7. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? You see, your body's not your soul, and your soul is not your spirit. Daniel 7 and verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. Huh. Are you starting to understand? We have a body, soul, and spirit. 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 15. Uh, Hannah was, well, you could read about Hannah. She was a very godly woman. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Job, chapter 7, verse 11. So here it is. This woman had a sorrowful spirit, and she poured out her soul before the Lord. Not the same. Job 7.11, Therefore, I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Anguish of spirit, bitterness of my soul. Get it? Isaiah 26, verse 9, With my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will will learn righteousness. So what did we learn? God said, let us make man in our image. We learned that God is one God. We learned that man was made in God's image, that man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. Why can't God have a body, soul, and spirit? Did not Jesus Christ come in the flesh? He had a body, right? What about the Father? God the Father. God the Father, I guess, would sort of kind of... I'm using human expressions to try to explain God the Father. I, I, I'm, I'm humbled to even consider it. But I guess he would sort of kind of be the soul. And then you got the Holy Spirit, what they call the Holy Ghost. Uh in the Hebrew, it's Ruach. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly. Um, and in the Greek, it's uh, pneuma, which is what they translate wind. Have you ever heard of pneumatic air tools? That's where it comes from. You know, God breathed into the, the breath of life into Adam, and he became a living soul. 
All right, let's take a look uh, in Genesis 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Now, in Genesis 1, God said, let us make, uh, make man in our image. But here in verse 2, I mean, chapter 2, God's forming man's body, Adam. And it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So here it is. God formed a body. God gave him the breath of life, the spirit, and man became a living soul. All right, so let's compare Jesus in the flesh and God. Now, a lot of people get confused on this. And believe me, it's, you know, I don't understand it perfectly. I, I don't, I, you know, I just... I've read a little bit more than most people, I guess you could say. In Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, we read, For I am the Lord, I change not. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Who's Jacob? Jacob had his name changed to Israel. So God never changes. But how about Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. God never changes. Jesus never changes. Now remember, 1 Timothy 3.16, God was manifest in the flesh. In Isaiah 43 and verse 11, we, we find that God is the only Savior. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me, there is no Savior. Jude 1, verse 12. To the only wise God, our Savior. Titus 2.10 God our Savior. 1 Timothy 4.10 We trust in the living God who is the Savior. Luke 1 and verse 47 God my Savior. But then we find out that Jesus is the only Savior. 1 John 4.14 The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. 2 Peter 3.18 our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 1.1 1, 1. God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. John 4.42 The Christ, the Savior of the world. Titus 1.4 The Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Luke 2.11 A Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Acts 4.12 Peter says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. 2 Timothy 2.10 Salvation is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Hebrews 2.10 The captain of their salvation, perfect through sufferings. Hebrews 5, 9, Jesus is the author of eternal salvation. We've learned that God created the universe and heaven by himself. Now, the Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you that God created Jesus as an angel and then let the angel Jesus create the heaven and the earth because they don't know who Jesus is. But in 
Isaiah 44 and verse 24. It says, I the Lord, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, not an angel. But then we find out that Jesus Christ created the universe and the earth. Hebrews 1 and verse 10. Unto the Son he saith, Thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. Colossians 1 and verse 16. By him, and they're speaking about Christ, by him were all things created that are, are in heaven and that are in earth. All things were created by him and for him. And that was Colossians 1, verse uh, 16. In John 1, in verse 3, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. I mean, come on. It's pretty clear, huh? Matter of fact, let's read John 1, 1. And your fake Bibles change this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And who's the Word? Well, Jesus. The same was the beginning, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light, the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Boom. Plain and simple. All right. Remember in John 1.1 1, 1, it said, uh, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word... Uh, yeah. So let's go to Revelation uh, 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, on, on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So all those, I guess all those black Hebrews are going to be wearing white and clean clothing, right? That's what they tell us anyways. All right, John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Remember, people. There's one God, period. All right, in John 1, in verse 14, And the Word was made flesh. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen to that. All right, in God is the first and the last. In Isaiah 41, verse 4, I, the Lord, the first and with the last, I am he. In Revelation 1 and 17, we read, Jesus said, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Now, people, a lot of people don't know it, but uh, we get our word for alphabet from Alpha and Beta, which were was A and B, uh, the first two letters in the Greek alphabet, or, you know, their script. But Omega was the last letter in the Greek alphabet. It's sort of like A to Z, you could say. So, in Revelation 1 and verse 8, we read, Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega. Alpha was the first of the Greek letters, and Omega is the last. So that's like saying, I am the A to Z 
I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Verse 11, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardius, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Revelation 21, verse 6, And he saith unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Yeah, we get it freely, but it cost him a lot. Remember the woman at the well? Jesus said that he would give her a, a living water. Well, here you go. The living water. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst, the fountain of the water of life freely. Revelation 22, 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. All right, let's go to the book of Psalms 103. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase from two, uh, verse 2 and 3. The Lord forgiveth all thine iniquities. And the Pharisees, the Jews, said in Mark 2 and verse 7, they asked, Who can forgive sins but God only? But in Mark 2, 5, Jesus said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. You see, only God can forgive sins, but here Jesus says he forgave sins. Who is our Redeemer? God is. Isaiah 63 and verse 16. Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer. And yet in Timothy chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. And I'm kind of paraphrasing because I, I want to keep these uh, Bible studies under an hour. Oh, and people, I'm on brighteon.com, B-R-I-G-H-T-E-O-N.com, uh, uh, because one day Tube is going to boot me off, and you can find me there. Christian Bible Studies. How's that for a name, huh? Uh, okay, we read this before, we'll read it again. God is one. Deuteronomy 6.4 Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. But yet, in John 10.30, Jesus says, I and my Father are one. In John chapter 1, we're going to skip around. We're going to read verse, verses 1, 3, 10, and 14. We're going to kind of skip over a little bit. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him. He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. John 14, 9. Jesus saith, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? In 1 John 5, 7, another proof text for which Bible you have. Do you have a fake Bible? For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. God has a son. Psalms chapter 2, and verse 7. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. In John 5.18, Jesus said also that God was his father. God is the Holy One. In Psalm 71.22, I will also praise thee with the psaltery, even thy truth. O my God, unto thee will I sing with the harp, O thou 
Holy One, Holy One of Israel. Uh, Psalm 78, 41. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Psalms 89, 18. For the Lord is our defense and the Holy One of Israel is our King. Isaiah 10, 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. Uh, Psalm 16.10 For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. Now, what the heck is this talking about? Well, David was saying, David knew his soul was going to go to hell. Uh, boy, I could make an entire study out of this. In the book of Luke, there is, I guess we're going to have to check it out. All right, let's go to Luke chapter 16. Now, Jesus said there was a certain rich man. He didn't say this is a parable. He said there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen. Purple was the color of royalty. Uh, Judah was the tribe of the kings. They would have worn purple. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day, which means he ate well. Verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. You see, this is why I say this is not a parable. Jesus called Lazarus by name. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, and in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. You see, Christ is mentioned Abraham by name and Lazarus by name. So the rich man is in hell and he sees Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried, who? The rich man. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he might dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, you see, the rich man said Abraham was his father. And Abraham even mentioned that this guy was one of his sons. Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. There was a big division, like maybe a big valley or something. I don't know. And beside all this, between, you, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us, that would come from thence. All right, so verse uh, 27. Then he said, who said? The rich man. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. See, the rich man wanted the Lazarus to go to his father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. 
let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, Abraham speaking to the rich man now, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. So what was David talking about there when he said that thou will not leave my soul in hell? Let's read that again. Psalm 1610. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. You see, all the Old Testament saints went to hell, well, Abraham's bosom, which was a compartment in hell, but it wasn't a place of torments. The rich man was in the place of torment, the flames. Abraham was not. They were awaiting the Redeemer to come. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. All right, let's take a look uh, at Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. So, the rich man was suffering in hell, and Abraham and Lazarus were not, evidently. So, Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and beheld a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown that was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny. Now a penny back then was a day's wage. A measure of wheat for a day's wage. I mean, that's, that's, that's a pretty expensive, people. A measure of wheat for a penny. So there's going to be famine. A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death and Hell, followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, and with hunger, hunger, famine, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Uh, you know, makes you wonder, four-legged beasts or two-legged beasts? And when he had opened the fifth seal, now listen carefully, not verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Verse 10. And they cried. Who cried? The souls under the altar. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? You see, this is New Testament. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. All right. All right, so Matthew chapter 12, verse 38. Then certain of the scribes and other Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. Oh yeah, show us a miracle, and we might just believe you if you show us another miracle. I mean, you know, Jesus did miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle, and here is they want to see another one. Well, you know what? If you didn't believe the first five or ten or fifteen or twenty, 
What's another one? You're not going to believe. Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he, Jesus, but he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Like Jonah, right? He was, you know, you ever read the book of Jonah? The whale's belly or whatever, you know, he went three days. He was in the whale's belly for three days and three nights. Well, actually, it says the great fish, but I don't know. And there shall no sign be given uh, uh, to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Well, what? So, Jesus went three days and three nights in the heart of the earth? Did he go to... Uh, Abraham's bosom and preach to Abraham and Lazarus and all the prophets? I think so. That's my opinion. All right, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3, uh, verse 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust. Christ is the just, and we are all the unjust. Boy, that's that fits me to a T, the unjust. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. What prison? Hell, right? The spirits in prison. Did Jesus die and go to Abraham's bosom for three days and three nights? It says right here, by which he also went and preached unto the spirits in prison. In Psalms 142 and verse 7, it says, Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Now, if you take a look at Isaiah chapter 14, it's speaking about the king, the wicked king, I guess we'll start in verse 15. It's talking about, I believe it's talking about Satan here. Uh, well, let's, let's, let's do a little bit more reading. Uh, let's see. Verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou become also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. See, hell is down, people. Heaven's up. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroy the cities thereof, that opened not the house, the house of his prisoners? You see, Satan kept 
people prisoners in hell by sin, that open not the house of his prisoners. Here's another interesting thing in Isaiah 24, 22. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. Visited by who? By Christ. Verse 42, 7. To open the blind eyes. Who opened the blind eyes? Christ did. To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and then that sit in darkness out of the prison house. In Isaiah 61, verse 1, wonderful verse. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek, he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Let's go to Luke chapter 4. Um, let's see. Verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, Jesus, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, which is the Greek rendering of Isaiah. We just read this. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering and recovering of sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this is scripture. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. You see, people, Jesus went and set the captives free. See, people, Jesus, let's go back. Uh, let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 27. Uh, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Uh, let's go to verse 3, Acts 3 and 13 and 14. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him, denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Pilate was determined to let Jesus go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. Let's go to verse 13, 34 and 35. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead... Now, no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore, he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. I think I'm going to close this out and um, make this a part one. And then we'll finish, we'll finish a part two. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.